question being is being read here. The question reads like this: that is, a steel sample with 1.5 weight percent carbon, no other alloying elements are present. It is slowly cooled from 1,100 degree centigrade to just below eutectoid temperature 723 degree centigrade. A part of the iron-iron carbon diagram is shown in figure, and the ratio find the ratio of the pro-eutectoid cementite content to the total cementite content in the microstructure that develops just below the eutectoid temperature. Now. Along with this information, a phase diagram is also given in the GATE 2023 of Mechanical Engineering paper. Let me now try to show you that diagram. Here is the diagram given. This diagram is showing you the eutectoid temperature is 723 degree centigrade, eutectoid composition is 0.8 percent weight carbon and here the steel sample with 1.5 percent weight percentage of carbon content is taken it is, and it is cooled from 1100 degree centigrade down to room temperature. Now, when it is as it is cooled from 1100 degree centigrade to just below eutectoid temperature to just below eutectoid temperature that means it is cooled from this 1100 degree centigrade to just below eutectoid temperature just below 723. Now, the question that being asked is, what is the ratio of pro-eutectoid cementite content to total cementite content? Always, you know, we discussed very clearly in the classes that pro-eutectoid cement, pro phase evaluation must be done just above A1 line. Now, this is what is called as the A1 line or, or eutectoid temperature line. This line is called as eutectoid temperature line or A1 line. All pro phase evaluation should be done a1 only. Now, if you would like to evaluate that, how do you proceed? There is what is called as a lever rule. By using lever rule, we will try to first find out what is the amount of pro content. So, we write here uh, the weight fraction of weight fraction of pro cementite pro eutectoid cementite is equal to weight fraction of pro eutectoid cementite is equal to we can write from here that is just above this 723 eutectoid temperature line just above this 723 line we consider this point as a c this as f and this point is taken as the d now how do you proceed just above this what you are having here is austenite. At this particular point, what you are having is cementite. This cementite, this uh, uh, the weight percentage of cementite is given by Cl distance out of Cd. So, pro cementite is given by the fraction Cf divided by Cd. That clearly means it is 1.5 minus 0 0.8 divided by Cd distance is 6.67 minus 0 0.8. This gives us an answer equal to 0 0.11. Um, we write here. <clears throat> yeah. 0 0.1186. 0 0.1186 is the answer. This is giving you weight fraction of proeutectoid cementite. Now, we have to find out what is the weight fraction of total cementite present in this particular field. Weight fraction of total cementite. Weight fraction of total cementite in this given 1.5 percent carbon containing steel is given by. How do you calculate this? Come on, friends. To find out this weight fraction of total cementite, always the total cementite phase is evaluated below A1 because the steel is cooled to just below uh, A1 line or just below eutectoid temperature line. You have to take a cooling a, a temperature line, a constant temperature line just below A1, just below A1. And now consider this point as C, this point as fulcrum F and this point as D. Now, just below, just below this 723 line, the 
compositions can be taken to be the same as the ones which are given in the question. Here at point C, the composition can be taken as 0 0.035. At F, the composition is 1.5%. At D, the composition is 6.67 percentage of carbon content. Therefore, we write here total cement rate is given by yellow color CF divided by PD. Now let us try to see this. Yellow color CF is given by 1.5 minus 0 0.035 according to the data given the problem divided by 6.67 minus 0 0.035. This gives us 0 0.2198. 0 0.2198. Now the required ratio. Now the required ratio is required ratio. In this question, you are asked to find out what is the you know ratio of weight fraction of protectoid cementite to weight, total cementite. The, so the required ratio is we write 0 0.1186 divided by 0 0.2198. This gives us the ratio as 0 0.54, and this is the correct answer for this question. So, we, what we are required to write in the fill of the blanks is that 0 0.54 is the right answer. So, the right answer for this question can be entered here. In this blank, we need to write 0 0.54, right? That is the answer for this question. Sweep of mild steel at elevated temperature involves a. Elastic deformation under constant load. B. Elastic deformation under dynamic load. C. Permanent deformation under constant load. D. Permanent deformation under dynamic load. Again, this question is from mechanical properties chapter, where we discuss in detail about creep test. We, if you examine the creep definition, it proceeds like this. That is, creep is a slow and progressive permanent deformation. Creep is a slow and progressive permanent deformation. Therefore, it is a permanent deformation, not elastic deformation. So, A and B, not correct. Next, what do you say? It is, it is a slow and progressive permanent deformation which takes place in materials under constant load. So, when you talk about under constant load, where is the choice? Yeah, C is talking about permanent deformation under constant load. D is permanent deformation under dynamic load. These are not correct. So, according to definition of creep, the correct answer for this particular question is given by choice C, permanent deformation under constant load. That matters become simple for answering by students of medicine, you know, because we give detailed account of all these aspects in the coaching program. Let me take another question. A metal rod of 14 millimeters diameter is subjected to a uni a tensile, tensile test. After the test, its cross sectional area or cross sectional diameter is uh, found to be uh, 12 mm at fractured end. The ductility in percentage is. Yes. This question also again comes from mechanical properties chapter. This question is given in gate 2023, PLI paper. Friends, if you examine in, a, in any tension test, in a tension test, we can write volume remains constant. There is no change in volume. Therefore, original area into original length is equal to final area into, let us say, final area AF is the notation that we can adopt into final length. Now, if you if you would like to rewrite this, this can be written as A naught by AF minus 1 is equal to LF by L naught minus 1. Now, what is this sir, that you are going to get here? That is on the left, on the left side that you are going to get, what you are going to get is A naught minus AF divided by AF is equal to LF minus L naught divided by L naught. Now, if you concentrate this particular difference, final length minus original length gives you elongation before fracture. Final length minus original gives you elongation before fracture divided by original length gives you ductility. 
So if you multiply this right side parameter by 100, you are going to get the ductility in terms of percentage elongation. Correct or not? Therefore, what we try to do here, let us try to examine. The data does not give you lengths. Data given the question does not give you lengths. It is talking only in terms of diameters. Therefore, your focus must be to evaluate the ductility in terms of area or in terms of diameters. Now, you can write. You know that A naught original area of cross section is pi into original diameter square divided by 4. Final, final area of cross section is pi into df square divided by 4. Now, when you, ever, when you interpret these values for A naught and AF, you will be able to understand that ductility percentage is equal to Right, ductility percentage is equal to, come on, A naught minus AF. When you do this A naught mi minus AF divided by AF, pi by 4 gets cancelled in the new den numerator and denominator. Therefore, you will be able to get this as D naught square minus DF square divided by DF square, right. All this into 100 because you want to get it in terms of percentage, right. Now, how do we proceed forwards? That is, already diameters are given. Original diameter and final diameter is there. Original diameter, uh, here we are going to get, um, yeah, uh, we have written it uh, correctly, right. A naught divided by AF is equal to LF by L naught. Now, once we evaluate this, we, we try to submit the values are related to this particular uh, question. The values that are given are like this. In this particular question, the original diameter and the final diameter values can be substituted and we can see that the uh, once the values are substituted here, we will be able to get the answers. Let us try to substitute the data and get the answers here. Yes. D naught original diameter according to the data given the problem, original diameter is 14 mm. So, 14 square minus final diameter is given as 12 mm, 12 square divided by final diameter is 12 mm square into 100. This gives rise to an answer of 36.11 percent. This is the answer for the question for ductility in terms of percentage. So, here we are asked to report the answer in terms of uh, two decimal places. So, the correct answer that can be reported here in this blank will be 36.11 percent. That is the answer for this particular simple question. Most of the students get confused here because they know Ductility is found in terms of percentage elongation. Everybody can find out percentage elongation in terms of this aspect. LF minus L0 divided by L0 into 100 is percentage elongation. That is going to be give, that is going to give you ductility. But when diameter data is given, there will be little confusion. Now that can be resolved by using this conceptual framework, which is covered normally meticulously in every Medici coaching class. Come on, friends. This is the question that was given in Gate 2023 P and I. This is also a question from P and I paper, Gate 2023. Match engineering the engineering materials at room temperature with their crystal structures. Once here, we are given two columns of information. The engineering materials are given on the left side, crystal structures are given on the right side, and you are required to match them. You know very well that silicon belongs to what is called as a diamond cubic crystal structure. So P goes with three. Iron at room temperature, the crystal structure is being asked. Iron goes with BCC structure, right? And aluminium is FCC in crystal structure. Zinc is HCP in crystal structure. Therefore, P goes with 3, Q goes with 4, P3, Q4, R goes with 1, R with 1, S goes with uh, 2. Therefore, the correct choice is given by choice A. Choice A is the first choice, is the correct choice for this particular question. And such things become easy for our students because 
in the classroom when we teach crystal structures we try to give abundant examples under each type of crystal structure and the students are hinted to remember these crystal structures at room temperature that is the consequence which makes our students to easily answer such type of simple questions